Hey guys, Ray David here. Just like my iPhone review video series, which is what, three years ago already? Time flies, it's crazy. I am here to do my iPad review separated into categories of apps, basically. So for this video, I'm going to be doing notes, photos, videos, and calendar. And then I'll have maybe two or three videos after this one covering the rest of Apple's apps. By the way, if you can't tell, I have all of Apple's apps native apps that is on the front page and then my third party apps on the second page along with um, apps down here in the dock. Okay so let's start out with notes. First of all I should say I do not have any notes on here so this isn't going to be rather exciting but this looks exactly like the iPhone version with a few minor graphical tweaks. Here is the notes portrait view but if you put it on in a landscape the uh, view is a little more interesting the notes section is now on the right, and you have your notes section um, over here where you can create new notes. And here I could just type if I wanted to, put the keyboard down, which is very easy to type on, by the way. Here I'll type my name without capitalizing because I don't want to waste time. So there you go, David DeFranco. And it's very easy to type. The, the keyboard's actually very large, um, probably four, four times the size of the iPhone or something like that. So now here's a close keyboard button, which is also a new feature. You can close the keyboard, and now my note appears over there. So now I can add another note by, by touching the plus sign on top right. And as you can see, it does that page uh, flip effect, which is pretty cool. And then I can start typing, typing my other note. Now, if I switch back to portrait view, get that back in the view for you guys, it's pretty much a boring view again. But if you click notes over here, you'll get a pop-up menu, which is pretty neat, showing the notes that I have composed. It's pretty basic but pretty self-explanatory. And if I wanted to email the note I could just by touching that mail icon. One more time I'll show you since I did that rather quickly. Tap the little mail icon. I can type my name in there or um, whose ever name and then send it my way. Or their way rather. Go cancel. You can also trash a note. So let's trash this note since it pretty much sucks. It's just random letters. And that's basically it. Now I promise you, the Photos app is much more exciting. Here's the Photos. Actually, by default, I was on Places before, just browsing the uh, map, which is amazing, by the way. It looks awesome. And let me just say, as a side note, the touch screen on this is so much more fun than it is on the iPhone and iPod Touch because it's huge. I mean, look how responsive this is. This thing is fast. I cannot say that enough guys. This thing is lightning fast. Alright, maybe not lightning because that's physically impossible. Anyway, up top here, I don't know if you can see it because of the camera angle, we have photos, albums, events, faces, which is set up in iPhoto by the way, and then places, if you um, have your photos geotagged. So let's start out with photos. This is basically all of your photos in one spot. And as you can see, performance is extremely smooth. I'm very impressed at the processor of the iPad. Look at this. It's not even stuttering. It just keeps on going and going and going. So a bunch of these are photos I took on my iPhone, but the photos still look pretty sweet. So um, actually, this is a photo I took with my SLR camera. That was on Seaside Heights one year. Uh, you can just basically swipe through them like this, just like on the iPhone or iPod Touch. Or if you want, you can tap, and you have your little scrubber down here where you can go through ultra fast again. Look at that. Look at that. It's extremely fast. And of course, my dad doesn't probably want me showing this photo because it's embarrassing to zoom up, but of course you can pinch and zoom, which is amazing. And I gotta say, I'm really loving this touch screen. The fact that it's 9.7 inches makes a huge difference. I mean, look at the responsiveness of this. It's insane. So anyway, let's go to albums because this is actually even more exciting. Basically, you see an album view, and if you want to open it, you can simply touch it. These are photos that I took for Flickr a while ago, even though I never really uploaded them. By the way, this does support landscape mode. So, of course, you could swipe through them. Uh, excuse me, you could zoom in rather and all that good stuff. 
But say I wanted to enter the albums mode to basically show off to someone um, seeing the iPad for the first time. This is really cool. You can actually pinch your album and it comes out. How freaking cool is that? I love these little interface tweaks. I mean, guys, this is amazing. Look at this. Multi-touch at its finest. I just moved the iPad by accident there. Anyway, you can pinch open an album, pinch it closed, simply touch it. You can still close it by doing that, you, you, even after just touching it. But anyway, let's just open this. It's my sister Kristen. This is in Florida when I visited Alfred. Hey, de Blasi. Shout out to you, Alfred. And there are the photos. Now, of course, if you wanted to play Slideshow, you simply touch Slideshow. And it's going to ask me for music, but I'm going to turn off music for copyright reasons, and I can choose my transition. And right now my favorite is definitely Origami, which is brand new, and it really is pretty cool looking. So here's a slideshow. And you'll see a pretty cool transition in a second. There you go. Now watch this. You um, should see like a flip effect. Yeah. How cool is that? One more, and then I'll exit this. There you go. Yes, I, I took a lot of pictures of the cube, which is why you've seen the same photo over and over again. And as usual, you can just skim through ultra fast speeds if you want. Now, if I wanted to send this picture, for instance, to a friend or family member, tap here. There's a share button in the top right. You can email photo, send to mobile me, assign to contact, use as wallpaper or, or copy photo. Now for this video's purpose, I'm going to say use as wallpaper. And this is brand new. This is something the iPhone does not have. You have the option of choosing either set lock screen or set home screen or set both. For this video's purpose, I'm going to say set home screen. And it's done. So if I exit this, let me find the home button. It's dark in here. You can see the wallpaper is now that. But if I turn off the iPad, the lock screen is still the desert one that I got off the um, wallpapers I came with the iPad. Alright, so going back into photos, we can also do events. This is also set up within iPhoto. So if I had, for instance, all, all these photos were taken on August 3rd, 2009. Those are Pug Jasmine, and you can swipe through them. That's our WTF face. This is amazing. Anyway, going back, you can view your, your other events. Which does lag a little bit, I gotta admit. Um, I guess because it has a process on the fly. But when you're just doing the single photos view, it's extra smooth. With events, it might lag a little bit here and there. Well, it's loaded into memory now, so it's not that bad. And then, of course, you can do faces, which is also set up with an iPhoto, and it automatically crops the photos onto the person's face. So, to not embarrass anyone, I'll choose my own photo, David DeFranco. These are all the photos that I was in that I tagged myself within iPhoto. Some pretty stupid pictures in college, but who really cares? And then, of course, you could play a slideshow if you wanted to. <laughs> That's actually an emo picture I took as a joke. And all that good stuff. And as always, uh, you can also share the photo by emailing, actually, which I'll show you real quick. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, like that. I'll touch that, rather. Email photo. And it drops it into an email automatically. And, of course, you can switch in the portrait instantly, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty much it. I may have missed one thing or two things here and there. Oh, also places. I showed you, showed you this in the beginning. But basically, if you geotag a photo you can see where they're taken. For instance, when I visited Alfred in Florida, I geotagged the photos, touched the pin, I shouldn't have touched the other one since there's multiple photos, and like last time, you can pinch out, which I cannot say this enough, guys, is so freaking cool. Anyway, that is the Photos app. Okay, so the next app is a really cool one, but I really can't show that much due to copyright reasons, but that is Videos. Pretty self-explanatory. It plays your videos. And yes, I have that. Don't laugh. I was just interested in the show. But I do have actually cool shows such as Lost. 
you know, I'll play a few seconds, but that's it. Previously on Lost. And then, yes. of course, you can rotate like that. My name's Clementine. Those are you could scrub through pretty quickly, too. There's Kate. We all love Kate, right? At least I do. And we're back in landscape mode here. Back to TV shows. And that's basically all I have in my videos app. Um, I also have The Office. Happy Hour, which is the newest episode. Awesome episode, by the way. And of course, to avoid copyright infringement, I'm going to exit that, and that is the videos app. Alright, this next one may not be too exciting to a lot of people, but to me, who um, has to keep track of a lot of things in my life, that is the calendar app. This one's pretty cool. And let me just say, the interface on the calendar app absolutely blows away the interface on the iPhone and iPod Touch. The default view, I believe, is day, which is amazing because it's basically a book. Your um, events would appear over here. Um, actually, your events would appear over here along with your information. And then you can choose calendars. I have Apple, Birthdays Home, other sponsors work. Sponsors is for my social blog. And then you can sort by week. I'm not sure if that's picking it up on the video, but believe me, it does look cool. Month, which is the view I like because that's the view I'm used to on my Mac. And of course, you can scrub through months very quickly. And if you want to jump back to today's date, simply touch today. And then there's a list, which does look really cool as well. I um, simply touch something, MasterCard payment is due, and that's when I would pay my credit card. But up here, it's a little more exciting. You know, here's the iPad release date, actually, which I had marked down, and then sponsors ending for my website. And then, of course, let me exit that. You can edit these, simply touch it. And then you can add location, start time, end time, alert, uh, second alert, and any notes that you want to leave for yourself. Scroll down a little bit. There you go. And now, actually cancel that because I don't want to save that. And that's really it. There's nothing too exciting. If you want to add a new calendar um, event, you click your touch, rather, the plus sign. The information appears over there at a title. You can choose your time. Very iPhone-like, so you guys should all be uh, pretty familiar with this interface. Then you can add it, and then you're done. It's that easy. And now you can see the ridiculous title I chose. Uh, but actually, for demonstration purposes, I'll touch that. Delete event. Delete. That easy. And of course, I can go back to today's date if I wanted to. Actually, I'm already on today's date. And then you can also go to portrait view which is pretty much the same but more space vertically. Alright guys, those are the four apps for now. My next video will be covering YouTube, which is amazing. iPod, iTunes, and Maps. Thanks for watching and as usual, check out my social links in the video description under this video. And I will see you guys pretty soon.